everyone, welcome back to Shutter Magazine. Today I'm going to be talking to you about how to build custom color profiles. Um, Photoshop Adobe Camera Raw allows you to build custom camera profiles. What are camera profiles? Well, um, typically when you're working in Lightroom Classic, Adobe Color is the default option, right? So you might be familiar with ones like Adobe Standard or some of these other ones, third-party ones that you might purchase and things like that that you can apply to your images but you don't have a whole lot of flexibility on what that profile does, right? You apply it, it adjusts or shifts the tonal or the color grading or the um, just the color um, appearance of an image um, and you don't really have any ability to add more or pull it back. Um, so what you can do with custom color profiles uh, in Camera Raw is you can develop a, a profile and then also apply an amount slider so you can start to manipulate the amount of that effect right so much like these pre-built ones like modern and things like that that are, that are supplied with Lightroom automatically you have an amount slider so the goal is to build a custom color profile and dial in our settings right so these are the user profiles that I created already in Adobe Camera Raw and I'm going to show you how to do that and how to have full flexibility and dialing back some of that creativity in the case that your image needs more adjusting. Let's jump into Lightroom Classic and talk about Adobe Camera Raw and how to build those custom profiles. All right, now that we have our raw file opened up in um, Adobe Camera Raw, we're ready to start adjusting our image and save this new custom color profile, right? So to save the profile, you're gonna to wanna to go to the Presets tab. You'll hold your Option key and you'll click on the new preset button. Now this prompts a new profile um, uh, pop-up box here where we'll choose some of the options. Now you'll notice that only the point curve is selected now because it's the only adjustment or custom adjustment that I've done. So once we go through and make some of the adjust these adjustments, we can talk about which ones we're gonna use and which ones we should keep, which ones we shouldn't use and things like that, as well as going through all of these settings. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit click cancel and start in the basic panel, right? So the first thing I wanna do is I wanna apply a better profile than Adobe Color. I want my color starting point to be a little bit different. Now, remember we talked about building a custom color profile, which we're gonna pick from here later under the user settings, but for now I'm gonna use my develop version two profile just because it pumps up the color a little bit, right? So I'm going to apply that and I'm going to start working down the line. Now, I want to leave white balance as shot because remember, if we set these adjustments, it's going to save that in my custom color profile and apply it to every image, which doesn't make, which doesn't make sense, right? Same goes for exposure. You want to be careful not to adjust any of these sort of more individualized adjustments, but you can add things like contrast or even drop the contrast if you want to create that little effect. I like to do a little more work in the tonal curve, so I'm going to put that back to zero. You have highlights and shadows, which you can create some flexibility in as well, which is kind of an interesting one. If we do you know, something a little more uh, moderate, like 30 and 30, and we can add some black, um, white point and black point to this. And remember these settings, we can always dial back with the amount slider in Lightroom once we start working with the custom color profile. So if we want to lessen this effect, we certainly can. So it's okay, okay to go a little extreme on these. Um, but just to show you for purposes of building this, we're going to kind of move down the line here. I'm going to add clarity and add 25. And pump up the vibrance to 25 and saturation to negative five. So as we move down the line to tone curve, we can start to mess with our specific tone curve here. So what I like to do is create a point system to where we can start to flatten some of these black tones, flatten some of the highlights, white tones, and just create a little bit of an effect here. something very subtle to kind of flatten our image and add some of that some of that look and character that we can have let's see here I 
We don't want to go too flat with our whites. But that's something just to kind of get us started on toning, um, kind of do a flat tone curve there. Um, so we can move down the line if we want to add sharpening. I'm going to leave all that alone. We don't need to pump those up too much. Now, hue and saturation is definitely an interesting one where we can start to um, assume that we're going to have some issues with skin tones that maybe we want to drop those down a little bit. Uh, maybe drop out some of our blue tones as well um, to really kind of warm those areas up. But taking this back, um, back to the tone curve and working with um, some color grading, you can add some options in here and start to adjust the shadows and highlights um, as well to kind of create a cool effect in the shadows and a warming effect in the highlights. You can do a sort of opposite effect as well in warming those. So I'm going to do something where we're going to cool down the shadows just a bit, just to kind of have a little bit of a push and pull here. And then we can go into HSL, kind of drop the blues a little bit so it's not as heavy, but we can have some cool tones there and kind of control some of that. So again, just for purposes of uh, you know working on these images, I don't want to these aren't settings that I would you know typically apply, but just kind of showing you as you can start to dial in, we can lift the luminance in our blues um, as well as the oranges and reds here. And now going down the line, we can do some split toning, right? So we can do, we can um, add even more of that warming effect in the highlights. We can go into the shadows and cool them just to kind of really start pushing this image here. Um, again, don't worry about them. This is, we're looking at toning for the total image. We're not really paying attention to what it's going to do to them um, at the moment. So. What we're going to do now is uh, I'd leave, leave lens correction off. We don't want to save that, anything like that. So I'm going to stop at this point and move into my um, building the color profile settings, right? So I'm going to go down and hold option, click on the um, create a preset button, and I am just going to name this, um, let's see, warm, cool, matte. Something simple, right? It's going to put it in my user profile group. Um, it's automatically going to select these settings that I was adjusting. So I didn't adjust any of these other ones, so it doesn't automatically select them. And now we have tone map strength, which is really important, right? Low, medium, and high. This, What this does is this gives you more flexibility in the dynamic range for your image. So when you make subtle, subtle adjustments with highlights and shadows, choosing high um, five or 10 points of highlights or shadows is has a much greater effect than medium or low. Um, when starting out, I would probably start with the medium. I think that's a good point to go with. And we can go through the different strengths that I've um, built already. Um, but medium is a good starting point. So something that becomes really important in the uh, new profile dialog box is the color lookup table or LUT files. You can X this box and it'll pull up all of the um, the cube or CUBE files that you already have built into your uh, Adobe Photoshop 2018 presets folder, right? So these uh, LUTs, there's a, a few third-party companies that are creating LUTs or have created LUTs that are uh, originally built for color grading video, but you can apply that same cinematic look and feel to your photographs now um, by applying these LUT files. So the new profile um, creating that custom color profile becomes really interesting when introducing cube files. Well, for the time being, we're going to go ahead and leave that off and just focus on the new profile here. So once I click OK, now I can go back to my basic panel and I can choose this specific user profile that I just created, right? So I have this color matte look here. Now something you have to keep in mind, right, is that it's going to amplify these settings because I have them all applied to my image. So what you would need to do is you would work from a completely separate or a new image altogether that would be reset. See we're doubling up all of these adjustments here. So if I go ahead and click on default and I start to make adjustments to the images I can sort of start from scratch. So 
um, with working with the um, profile, it's going to be really important to save this into Lightroom, right? So uh, there's a few ways to get going and making sure we have our settings applied right. So I've already created a Let's see here. Now that we've created our look and feel, what we can do is we can save our settings, um, export settings to an XMP. Um, that's what we'd want to do to apply, right? So when we click on that, it's going to create an XMP file. I'm going to go ahead and click Cancel. I don't want to save any of those settings that I already had applied. And now we can move into Lightroom and start looking at the color look that we've created. So now that we have our image opened in Lightroom, so you can see I've done some editing to it, some local adjustments, dodging and burning, to really correct the image. But it doesn't really have any sort of creative flair or anything to it, right? So we have the Adobe Color Profile applied. That's default in Lightroom Classic. So our next option would be to change that profile and start making a little more um, of a creative decision. So we can click on, on the profile and click on Browse. And you're gonna notice right away the favorites panel pops up here with a bunch of our um, favorite um, different profiles to apply. Um, all the way at the bottom now you have a new section that says right user profiles. So you have these heavy user profiles here that we can start to apply um, to our image to really let it sort of transition from that basic kind of correction look we can start to add a little more of this custom color profile here. So it can really help our image, um, you know, sort of transcend the uh, color correction. So what I like about this, uh, the custom color profiles, much like the vintage, modern, black and white and artistic ones, is you can adjust the amount slider, right? So when we're working with a third party profile. We don't have that ability. It's either all or nothing. So these user profiles become a little more flexible um, in being able to apply something at say 50%. So if I want to start messing with this image and really start adjusting to see how far um, you know how far it's being pushed, I can start to make all of those normal adjustments here um, as I've been doing in the um, you know, in the different develop panels, but in adjusting this amount, right, you might be able to create a preset where you have a lot of your settings kind of adjusted and you can apply this profile with the amount slider applied as well. So it becomes really flexible um, when working with images, right? So when you create the profile in uh, Photoshop, we talked about using the um, we talked about saving um, or exporting the settings as an XMP. That becomes really important, right? So the XMP is going to sit next to your RAW file. So once you do that uh, and you already maybe have the RAW imported into Lightroom, you can choose the option in the uh, library mode to do read metadata from file. What that's going to do is it's going to overwrite. So if I click on that now, it's going to overwrite that with whatever my last settings were. So you want to just make sure you're being careful on which ones you're applying. Um, but uh, what that's going to do is it's going to force Lightroom to add your user uh, profiles because sometimes it's a little bit tricky to find it in your finder window to save them from the settings folder. Classic's kind of goofy that way. So I sort of force, um, I force Lightroom to bring the profiles in that way, right? So we're going to, um, just to walk through those steps one more time, we have our uh, image here that we want to open directly into Photoshop. When we create that warm and cool look, like here, right? Um, we're going to, let's see, we're going to go ahead and hit close. And we're going to export this, these settings to an XMP, which it's going to do. Then we can go into Lightroom Classic, right? The, that warm, cool matte look isn't there for us. 
Um, so it's just going to look a little rough, but that's okay. So we can do read metadata from files. We'll bring it in. Let's see where it put it. Make sure it's applied. It's Adobe Standard. It's still not applied. Let's go ahead and cancel this. Let's get back up. Let's make sure I'm using the right settings here. So we have save settings, export as XMP. Let's do save settings. No. Let's try this one more time. Export settings to XMP. Make sure that it updates it. Now we can hit done. Close out of Photoshop. Let's open our catalog back up here real quick. So we've saved an XMP, and now this should let us, should give us the prompt to update the settings. Read metadata from file. Hmm. There we go. It's finally bringing it in, right? So here's the look, and it's not as crazy as it was in uh, Photoshop, right? So you might have to do it a couple times. Like I said, it's you trick Lightroom into bringing it in. It's a little bit, uh, <laughs> could be a little goofy of a process. So, um, but the good thing is, is you can start at zero and you can start to creep this slider to the right, right to where you're happy the way it looks. But then you can also toggle your other settings as well right so you have the medium that you can apply the low and we can take this back and do that same thing right so you can create a bunch of profiles and even use third-party ones to build within it like we had done here with the develop so a lot of possibilities a lot of things that you can apply to your image here um, and ways to go but uh, that's it those are the results right so from um, you know before and after right you can kind of see the the difference between these two images and kind of oh kind of zoom out here once Lightroom picks up on that perfect so uh, that's all I have for you guys so um, definitely worth checking out um, and trying and building your uh, custom color profiles it's pretty simple to do in Photoshop so you can get as advanced or extensive with the adjustments as you want but make sure to stay away from like white balance exposure some of these more individualistic adjustments that you would apply image to image to make sure you're not over processing the image up front uh, but uh, yeah definitely check it out and uh, let me know if you guys have any questions or suggestions take care